Filament eruptions are often associated with geomagnetic storms, so I thought it might be useful to take a look at how a filament eruption occurs, and explain some of the terms associated with it. There's a particularly good example to use on the 28th of April 2015. To do that we need to go back about a day before the actual eruption to see the development of the filament. We're going to use images from the Solar Dynamics Observatory's AIA instrument in the line helium-2304, which corresponds to about 50,000 degrees Kelvin. Here we have the northeast quadrant of the solar disk, shown in helium-2304. To give you some idea of scale, the size of the Earth is that little blue dot just above the image. The feature we are discussing here is that dark line that stretches from about the centre of the disk to above the northeast limb, marked with the two blue arrows. On the disk, that feature is called a filament. Above the limb, that is called a prominence. They are actually just the same thing, but for historical reasons, they are termed differently depending on where they are on the sun. Now let's see a movie of the eruption itself. This is going to be over a two-day period, starting on the 27th of April, going through to the 29th of April. Filaments appear dark because they are cool, dense materials suspended above a magnetic neutral line. They can remain stable for days, if not weeks, and then suddenly erupt for no apparent reason. A couple days later, that filament started to reform in about the same position. You should note that sunspots are not associated with this event at all. The nearest region is about 200,000 kilometers to the west of this filament channel. Let's take another look at that movie. But this time, note, after the filament has erupted, there are two bright areas that uh, form and slowly spread apart. What are they? Those are called flare ribbons. They are the foot points of an arcade of bright hot coronal loops formed by the eruption of the filament. How do we know this? Well, we can look at a higher temperature line from the AIA instrument and actually see the loops. This is a line showing coronal plasma at about one million degrees. And you can clearly see the arcade of loops there. Also note there is another smaller and fainter filament to the southeast of the original one. See what happens to it when these bright uh, ribbons hit it. That filament is indicated by the little blue arrow on the picture here. Here's the evolution of that filament. You can see initially it's quite stable, but it gets more and more dynamic and starts to move around as time goes by. Here it's erupting, and there are those two uh, ribbons moving towards it, and there it hits the other filament and it erupts. What happens to the filament after it's erupted? For that we have to go to SOHO's uh, coronagraphs, the C2 and C3 instruments. Coronagraphs produce artificial eclipses of the sun, the white circle in the middle of this image is actually the size of the sun as we see it. So this image goes out to several solar radii. Now let's take a look at the larger C3 field of view, and the filament still uh, carries on way to the edge of that particular uh, field of view. If this event had occurred a couple of weeks later when this region was on the west limb, we could have been installed for a very strong geomagnetic event at Earth. 